So you're a scientist and you want to explain the difference between conscious processing and unconscious processing. The place to begin is with contrastive analysis. We talked about contrastive analysis a little bit when we talked about the neural correlates of consciousness. Now you need to look at the descriptions more carefully and look at the distinctions being drawn between what consciousness is and what unconsciousness is and how they work uh, because that's what the scientist is trying to grapple with and get uh, an explanation of this distinction. So conscious processes are inefficient, they cover a large range of contents, unified, serial, and limited, and involve perceptual contents. So consciousness is restricted in these kinds of ways. One thing happens after the other. Lots is integrated in a moment of consciousness. A lot of different kinds of contents are integrated, but they're not that efficient in terms of actually effectively processing information. That sort of thing is done best by unconscious processes. So look at that list. Very efficient routine tasks, high speed, but limited range, just isolated processes, distributed, parallel, and high level, and involved in every mental task. So unconscious processes are doing all kinds of things all the time. My ability to stand here and gesture is all being done unconsciously. The production of my words is unconscious. If I try to consciously pay attention to trying to speak, then I get all messed up. So my consciousness is integrating all of the things that are going on. I see what's happening in this room and I hear my voice and I see my arms moving and all that sort of thing is, is part of my conscious experience but it looks like all of the work of these processes is being done unconsciously. So in thinking about this, this contrast between conscious and unconscious, as Dehane says, it looks like a lot of the work is being done in a non-conscious mode. And so the challenge then is to figure out what is the job of consciousness going forward. One important paradigm for research into the distinction between conscious processing and unconscious processing is known as masked priming. Dehane and company talk about it as behavioral priming, you'll hear it as semantic priming or unconscious priming. There are lots of different terms for it, but priming is, is the key word that suggests that what the uh, researchers are doing is sending the subjects a signal that is unconscious, that sub-threshold. And this is how the paradigm works. If you look at the left side of the slide, you'll see how the visible slides are presented. And the idea behind priming is that these visible processes can be disrupted if there is a squiggle presented, a squiggle slide presented right before and right after a target slide. So the visible slide, you have a squiggle, squiggle, blank. The target is either going to be a word or a blank, then a blank and a squiggle and squiggle. On the masked side, you see exactly the same number of slides. They're presented in exactly the same amount of time. The only difference is that the squiggle slides are moved in relation to the blank slides. So this, you get a squiggle, blank, squiggle, prime, or a target, squiggle, blank, squiggle. All right, so the squiggles are right up before and after the target. And what happens when you have a squiggle right before and after the target is that the subject reports they can't see it. So if you look at the bottom um, in, in the, the, the graph there, um, the very left side, stimulus detection, very high for the visible. So if you give the subjects the uh, sequence on the left, they'll say, yeah, I saw that slide. I saw the target slide. And the second over word naming, they'll be able to say, yeah, I saw the target slide, it was lion. Or I saw the target slide, it was slide, it was blank. For the masked ones, if it's either the word or the blank target, then the subjects will not report anything, you know, like almost no uh, uh, stimulus detection almost no word naming, recognition. If you give 
the subjects a list of words afterwards. Have you seen them? Have you not seen them? The masked ones will not appear um, uh, very often on that list. But, and this is the interesting bit of these paradigms, is that if you give them a forced choice guess, was it a word or was it a blank, then subjects will better than chance guess correctly that it was either a word or a blank. So that suggests that there is some processing that's going on, even though the person denies seeing it and cannot recognize it, cannot name it, okay? So unconscious processing of the stimulus. So similar to blindsight, which we talked about earlier, where the subjects deny seeing the stimulus, but can, uh, can guess with better than chance accuracy regarding what the stimulus was. So that's mass priming, and what's nice about this paradigm is that you can put subjects into an fMRI machine and get pictures of their brain while they're processing these uh, different stimuli. And so on the first uh, set of pictures, we see the different brain areas that light up, uh, and so with the visible, you have occipital processing that's going on in the back of the brain and some of the frontal processes towards the front of the brain and uh, some, some parietal areas which are important in attention. Um, and then also, and then in contrast, looking at the mast um, uh, brain areas that are lighting up, much less activation, much less focused activation uh, in the mast um, uh, brain, brain diagram, just a little occipital stuff and a little tiny bit in the prefrontal cortex. And in the next slide, you see the another analysis of the brain data in a time course of looking at the way in which the signal gets processed first. If you look at the visible side, first in the back of the brain in the occipital cortex, this bright red area, and then uh, in towards the frontal cortex, the red moves moves to the front of the brain, and then ends up settling uh, towards towards the middle, um, very bright. In contrast, the masked words get also processed initially fairly strongly in the occipital cortex, but so much less in the frontal cortex towards the front of the brain, and then again settling towards the middle, but much less strong in terms of that processing. So you can see the difference between the conscious processing and the unconscious processing in terms of how uh, the signals move through the brain in terms of level of activation. And um, the varieties of conscious processing are quite vast. All kinds of different types of, of processing have been submitted to this method of, of analysis in terms of priming. And um, you can look at uh, semantic analysis, that's the one we were just looking at, of the target being a word, and you can either, um, you know, you either see the word or you don't see the word, uh, and uh, different ways in which word priming can lead to different kinds of behavioral effects, like um, if we show the word lion and then have you fill in uh, some sort of associative uh, task like cat, you know, think of a cat, people will be more likely to say lion even if that word was masked, right? So there are different kinds of priming experiments that, ha that show that um, the processing happens and there is an effect that happens as a result of the processing. Emotional stimuli, the uh, uh, slide here shows the uh, priming of happy and angry faces, happy and sad faces. There's a happy, neutral, and a sad face. Those then get masked and then the subject is shown a neutral face and asked to interpret it. If you've been shown a masked happy face, you'll be more likely to interpret the neutral face as happy. If you've been shown a sad face, you'll be more likely to interpret the neutral face as uh, sad. Um, so again, priming of emotions, priming of attention in terms of spatial cues, and um, even more executive sorts of functions like error detection and self-monitoring are shown to have effects uh, through priming. Dehane and company describe this um, on page 77, the left side, first uh, or last paragraph at the very beginning. They say, all in all, 
these findings refute the idea that non-conscious processing stops at an early perceptual level. So one way to think about non-conscious processing is, well, you know, it's this just this initial uh, visual or, or, or auditory processing, and then, you know, to get anything out of the signal, it's got to become conscious. And they're saying, no, these data show that things get processed very, very far along. Meaning and value are clearly can clearly be assigned non-consciously. So these very high level ideas of, of word concept and, um, and emotional valence, these are things that can be processed entirely unconsciously. Uh, and so more stuff is, is going on unconsciously than we might have thought previously. Um, and that's been the importance of this work on, on uh, priming and, and unconscious processing.